Welcome on board, everybody, here to Sports Talk Nation. Boy, we got to talk about that week 14, a wild week, but another bad week for the for the showcase for the New York City-based teams. Oh, yes. Let's go right at it. All right, folks, Michael Cohn here with you, and we are going to recap week 14 and, uh, again, another week where it was just pure misery for the Jets, for the Giants, as these two teams now officially eliminated from the playoffs as if they weren't eliminated from the playoffs weeks and weeks and weeks ago. But I I think we're at the point right now, and I felt this way last night after watching those games. Uh, I felt uh, and listening to talk radio throughout the day on Monday, and I, I, it's pretty obvious that I'm not crazy in the way I'm, I feel because it feels like, from the Jets' standpoint, let's start with the Jets first. When you have a team that's trying to rebuild, when you have a team that's trying to redevelop a program, you want to see signs of of life, basically. You want to see signs that this is going to be a team that's starting to make that move, that they're going to you know, start to turn things around, turn the corner as a team. Uh, maybe you see some players stand out that you know, you're know, going to be key contributors to this franchise moving forward into the next season. Not necessarily you're going to win games, but just to, to have games where you can put up a fight, where you have an opportunity to, where you put yourself in, in, cha- in places where you have chances to win games. And that's not happening with the Jets. This is a team that's been getting blown out in games. They've given up 30 or more points in six of their last eight games. Their defense has been terrible. And now you have a situation here with Zach Wilson where it's pretty obvious to me, that, he, and obvious to everybody for that matter, that this guy has no confidence in himself right now. And this coaching staff has no answers right now. And you hear Robert Sala kind of, you know, throughout the, the missile saying that, you know, we have confidence in our guys, and, you know, we're, we're building towards something. We're, you know, put, basically the same stuff that Joe Judge said after the loss of the Giants, that basically the Jets are building a foundation. Well, where is that foundation right now? Where is the hope right now that this is going to be a team that's moving forward that has something to look forward to into next season? Because, yes, the Jets see the, – the, I understand the Jets are not going anywhere. I know it's a rebuilding team, but you want to have uh, at least have a pulse at the end of the season. And I uh, give your fans some reason to believe that, hey, okay, this season wasn't great, but we have this to build on. Right now, you don't see that. And I'm very concerned right now about Zach Wilson. And yes, I understand that Denzel Mims had the two big penalties against them that killed the, killed the drive there for the Jets. I understand that uh, Ty Johnson had a couple of big drops early in the game. I understand that uh, Keelan Cole had a couple of big drops in the second half of the game yesterday against the Saints. I totally get that. This is a team that's depleted on talent on both sides of the ball. They don't have a lot of depth uh, deep on the defensive side, especially in the secondary. We knew that it was going to be a problem all year. I understand that out that you know losing Elijah Moore is a problem, losing Michael Carter in the in the backfield is a problem for this team. But still, even with that, you have enough players out there to compete. You're going up against a team that isn't going anywhere in the Saints, and you lay a you lay a complete stinker against this team against that team. And Zach Wilson is inaccurate. Short passes, especially five, six, seven yard screen plays, he can't complete them. We see a ball that goes into the dirt, a pass to, uh, to Braxton Berrios that should have been an easy dump-off pass to the sideline. Can't complete it. And yes, Zach Wilson has a lot of arm talent. When he has the opportunity to roll out and make plays, we heard about this all offseason. All offseason through the draft process, through training camp, through preseason, off-platform throws, the, the big arm talent. Yes, we, he has that. No doubt about it. And when he had the opportunity to showcase that against the Titans in Week 3, it was there, obviously. But you can't win games all the time by throwing bombs all over the field. You have to be able to make precise throws. You have to be able to make those kind of plays short yardage and move your team down the field and eat chunks of yards. We saw a little bit of that against the Eagles, but not enough. It was only for about a half in the first half of that game. And since coming off the injury list the last three, three weeks ago, he has not been spectacular. And Wilson himself kind of, you know, put a little bit of onus on himself a few weeks ago. And he said, hey, you know, I've had my four weeks to, you know, recover from the injury. This is a new season for me. I'm looking at this as a brand new start, fresh start. And it looks like a lot of the same mistakes we saw in the first half of the year. And I'm not saying the Jets have to go out there and blow it up with Zach Wilson, look for another quarterback right now. They're not going to do that. Not after investing as much money and draft stock for capital for that matter 
in him with the number two overall pick. He is going to be the guy next year, but you want to have confidence. You want him to have confidence and the franchise to have confidence that he is definitely the guy going into next season. You want to see signs that he is going to be that guy that's going to take an- another step up. But there are so many examples on both sides of the spectrum here. You can mention all the quarterbacks. Drew Brees, another one, you know, who took time to develop, eventually figured it out. That is certainly possible here for Zach Wilson, but there are a lot of guys who never did. And Zach Wilson is going to be a question mark moving forward for this team going into next year. It's, it's unavoidable right now. It really is. He has not played well. He has not looked good at all. And it doesn't help when, when the coaching hasn't been very good at all, whether it be the head coach, Robert Sala, whether it be the offensive coordinator, Mike LaFleur. It hasn't been good at all on anybody. And you hate to see that this franchise is going down this road again. Look at this photo. There he is, Zach Wilson. Look, a befuddled look on his face. You know, on, a, on, a, on the ground, basically just trying to figure out what's going on here. What's happening to me? How many quarterbacks have we seen that? Look, Mark Sanchez and Geno Smith and Sam Darnold. I mean, we're tired of seeing this. Look. And it keeps happening for the Jets over and over and over and over again. They don't get their quarterbacks a lot of help, and they Throw, they throw these guys, these young kids into the fire when they're not ready. And I wonder whether the Jets should have, and again, I go back to this from the start of the year, they should have drafted, they should have signed a veteran quarterback sooner. They should have, uh, whether it had been Joe Flacco or somebody else, start of the year with that veteran quarterback for a majority of the season and then bring in Wilson uh, slowly in that regard towards the end of the year and give him a taste so that he has at least had a chance to play a little bit but also had a lot of time to sit and learn. He hasn't had that. He's been thrown to the fire, and it hasn't worked for him, and his confidence right now is hit. you, you got to admit it. It's been hit hard by what's happening here to him throughout the course of this season. And I think that's the biggest concern if you are a Jet fan right now heading towards the end of the year and you're left wondering, where are we going with this? Who are the New York Jets right now? Granted, I understand it's the first year of a rebuild. I totally understand that. But it's a reasonable question to ask at this point. As far as the Giants are concerned, I mean, that is a situation where it looks like they're going to have to bl- they're going to be close to blowing things up. All reports being that David Gettleman is going to be on the way out in New York as the general manager. Uh, we'll see who the Giants are going to bring in here and what's going to happen with Joe Judge because he continues to put out statements every week now that just blow people's minds. Uh, last week after the Miami loss, saying that the Giants were playing hard and that uh, there were a lot of big plays that were made. They only got inside the 20-yard line of the Dolphins once the entire game, so I don't know what he's talking about there. And then this the week leading up to the Charger game yeah, on Sunday, saying that you know this was a chance for the team to bond and come together. They were you know, practicing in Arizona the, entire, Arizona the entire week, and they were down by 30 points by the fourth quarter against the Chargers, and he goes out there, the post game does, Joe Judge, and says, we're laying the foundation. What foundation? What foundation? So you have to wonder whether he is going to be the head coach of the Giants very much longer, and we all know about the Daniel Jones situation, whether he is going to be the quarterback, whether we're going to see him again as he's dealing with the neck injury this year. So uh, the Giants situation is an even bigger problem right now than for the Jets. The Jets is a situation where it's kind of like, well, We're going to find out more in 2022 what's going on over there. We're going to have to wait with that one. But the Giants, they need to make a lot of wholesale changes, and a lot of wholesale changes are coming very quickly for Big Blue. They have to because they cannot continue down this road uh, that they're going down of basically nowhere. That's why you see that back page of the New York Post the way it is, Loserville. That's what it is with these two teams. So from that standpoint, from the New York City standpoint, a lot of frustration a lot of frustration. You're sitting back there. You're watching this football season unfold. You see all these teams having great seasons. Teams like the uh, you know the Patriots figuring out with a with a rookie quarterback, of course, with Bill Belichick there as head coach. Uh, you sit there. You see Tom Brady at 45 years old, basically still playing great. Uh, you see all these things that are going on around the league, and these two teams are still stuck in the mud. It's like they've been stuck in the year 2017 for the last four or five years. That's what it feels like right now with the Jets and the Giants. It's like they've been frozen in time, in, in, in the frozen in time of bad, incompetent football. And that's how it feels right now if you are a Jets or Giants fan right now. It's an, it's an incredible, incredible situation. So 
Oh, that's where we are, folks. I, I just don't know what else to say. It's just it's very frustrating from that standpoint. I feel for the fan, a lot of the fans out there. Again, leave your thoughts below. How do you feel about it? You know, how do you feel about the Zach Wilson situation? What do you think about Robert Sala, Joe Douglas? What do you think the, the future holds for those two guys? Leave your thoughts below there. Giant fans, I want you to send off about your team. Leave it below, folks. Remember, follow us here on Sports Talk Nation. Like and subscribe below. Follow us on the social media as well. At OpenMikeNJ, Facebook.com slash OpenMikeProgram on Facebook. We'll talk to you next time.